let's pick, off, pick up where we left off. So we had said that for the group D4, we had a subgroup K, which was the two rotations R0 and R180. That's a normal subgroup. And we went through and showed that it had four different cosets. So if I'm going to create this factor group, the Cayley table will have those four elements each way. And so to do R0K times R0K, again, it's going to be something times K. R0 times R0 is R0. So this is R0K. Similarly, this will be R90K. This will be HK. This will be DK. Always because when I'm multiplying by that R0, that's not going to affect what we have. Same thing down here. This will be R90K, this will be HK, and this will be DK. Now, when I go here, R90K, R90K is going to give me R180K, but R180K is the same thing as R0K. R90 times h is d prime. So this is going to be d prime k. But again, looking up here, d prime k is the same thing as d k. r90 times d is h. So this is h k. HK times R90K, we're doing H times R90, which is D, so DK. H times H is the identity, so this is R0K. And H times D is R90, so we have R90K. D times R90 is V, so we have VK, but VK is the same as HK. D times H is R270, so we have R270K, which is the same thing as R90K. Finally, D times D is the identity, so we have R0. Okay. Once again, an example is not proof, but looking at it, we do see the R0K is the identity element. Every element has an inverse, and we know that this has to be associative. Now, this particular example, if we look at it the right way, shows us something very interesting. What I've taken here is the Cayley table for D4. But I've reordered it just a tiny bit. I've went ahead and put it so that the rotations are sort of out of order here. And the reason is, is that I wanted to kind of put it together so that it was in blocks of two according to which two elements created the same coset. So R0 and R180 create the same coset. I want to be sure that R0 and R180 are next to each other. R90 and R270 create the same coset. So I want to make R90 and R270 be next to each other in both directions. What this does is that if we notice that when we put through this all multiplication together, it kind of breaks up into two by two blocks. In that 2x2 two two block, there are two copies of R0, two copies of R180. This one has two copies of R90, two copies of R270. Two copies of H, two copies of V. And we can continue that throughout the whole table. Everything we've got here 
breaks it down into two by two blocks. And if we look at that, R0 and R180, well, those were the things that were in K. This two by two block of R90 and R270 are the things that were in the coset R90K. In fact, and this is going to be tough to see on this camera, if we put this together, if I think about this 2x2 two two block being my R0K, this one is being my R90K, this one is being my HK, this one is being my DK, we're actually getting the exact same thing. These 2x2 two two blocks are the elements we got in our Cayley table here. This is really what a factor group is doing. It's kind of compressing stuff down into groups and saying, instead of having the individual elements like we've got in the whole group, we're taking them in blocks. We're taking them as chunks and kind of compressing it down into fewer elements that are still somehow related. That's confusing, but really look at it and see if you can understand what's going on here. Because this idea of somehow using a factor group to compress it down into a, a related group that has a smaller number of elements is going to be absolutely key as we go forward.